choose somebody. So keep it simple. Under pressure in the exam, you're going to have to have a simple system that you can rely on. Think globally, regionally, and locally, and practice. The knee's a brilliant, brilliant joint, clearly the best one to practice on. You can palpate loads of structures around the knee. Just practice all the time. Develop a system and stick to your system. Always do the same thing, no matter what patient you're presented with. Stand the patient and look. Walk the patient and look. Sit the patient down and look. Lie the patient down and look. I keep going on about it. Look at the patient. Don't dive in and get your hands straight in there. So, we're going to start. We're going to look at the patient from the front. The patient stood up, and you're going to assess their lower limb alignment. If they've got a valgus knee, like this example, ask them to stand with their knees together. If they're varus, ask them to stand with their feet together. That accentuates the deformity. If you've got a valgus knee, you can't stand with your, with your feet together. Assess the quadriceps bulk, the fusion. Don't forget the back of the knee and all the other things that we've, we've listed there. Look from the front, look from the side, and look from the back. <coughs> and don't miss obvious clinical deformities. You may have unilateral or bilateral deformity or windswept knees. Whilst they're in this position, you can assess for the Q angle and also for rotation and alignment. So this patient clearly will have internally rotated femur, the, the foot's inwardly pointing, the patella's inwardly pointing. So you should already be thinking, I'm gonna, later on I'll be doing rotational profile, I'll be assessing bait and score. Can we start the video, please? Walk the patient. Walk, gait is a great place to trip yourself up and make a mess of it. So again, keep it simple with the gait. This patient's got a lateral thrust. He's got various knees. You've all seen lateral thrust. Just say he's got lateral thrust. My preference for, for gait is to skip it as quickly as possible. And in the knee, you're only going to find an antalgic gait, a stiff knee, possibly a foot drop, and that's about it. Know those. Don't get bogged down with rockers. You can easily confuse yourself and move on. Don't forget about walking aids. And if they're in a wheelchair, ask them if they can stand and walk. Can you start on the next video, please? Next thing we're going to do is sit them down. And we're assessing, really, the extensive mechanism when they're sitting, when they're sit, when they're sat. Assess the patella height, the tracking, crepitus, and active range of movement. You don't need to touch the patient at this point. You can look. That's not the average patient. He presented seven months after a dislocated patella, and he was playing football, doing normal things. So we're going to lie the patient down. This gives you another opportunity to look. Sometimes when they're stood up, there might be a shadow. You might not be able to see little scars. So look again when they're on the couch. At this point, I screen the hip. So just give, a, give the hip a quick rotation. So you just think, showing the examiner you're thinking about the hip. And then assess all, all the things we've listed, quadriceps, bolts, scars, swelling, effusion. Specifically addressing quadriceps wasting, measure from a fixed point, either the anterior, superior, lax, spinal, or tibial tuberosity on both sides and compare. And practice doing it. If the first time you've measured the quadriceps bulk is in the exam, you've clearly made a mistake and you won't, it won't look slick. So we're going to move on for tests for effusion. And in real life, in clinical practice, an effusion is a really important thing because if you've got an effusion, you've got something wrong with your knee. It's also important in the exam. So for a small effusion, you do a swipe, wipe, bulge test, whatever you want to call it. I don't really mind. You empty the medial side and you push back from the lateral side and you see a bulge on the medial side. Make that look slick. Patella tap, you're pushing the fluid down from the super patella pouch and you're piano keying the patella, patella against the trochlea. Development test is for a massive effusion. You're just feel, feeling a fluid thrill from side to side. The knees are brilliant. Knee to, so at this point, we can now having done quite a bit, actually start to examine the patient with your fingers. Flex, get them to flex in 90 degrees, that opens up the knee joint and it makes palpation easier. At this point, have another look, because small, well-heeled arthroscopy scars may be invisible, and I do a little cheat here, and I say to the patient, have you had an arthroscopy? Or something like, you know, you can, if you see, you may see a little scar, ask him, because it may, not, it may not be healed. Palpate the landmarks and know what you're feeling, and don't forget about the back of the knee. Don't miss obvious things like osgood Slatter's disease. And start systematically, go distal to proximal, feeling along the way, as you do. 
and know what, where the medial femoral condyle is. Know what you're feeling. Know, know the joint line. So we lie the patient down now and move the patient. This is where I see my registrars make a mess of it because they're desperate to do it themselves. When you've got a patient there who can move his leg, you already know that. You've got information. You've seen them, be, they can bend the knee. So get them to do it first. Get them to do a straight leg raise. Straight leg raise is really important because I see loads of missed quadriceps tendons in my practice. So in real life, don't forget about straight leg raising. And in the exam also. And get them to do it. Get them to flex the knee. And if they've got full range of movement, you don't need to try and squeeze that extra little bit of movement out of them. And you can hurt the patient, so be very careful about squeezing that extra bit of flexion in, a, in the knee. Look for extension and quantify and compare with the opposite side. Measure it and again, get used to measuring range of movement so you're not doing it for the first time in the exam. So full extension, flexion, compare with the opposite side and check for hyperextension. There's different ways of assessing ligaments. I like to do cruciates first, then collaterals. If you, your system is collaterals first, then cruciates, I don't mind. But what you're interested in, sorry, go back one, is laxity and endpoint. Patients complain of instability, but you assess for laxity. And I want to know what the endpoint feels like. I would start with the posterior cruciate ligament. Put the knee, knees together at 90 degrees with the heels together. And the examiners often talk about having a pencil against, so this obviously is sagged, the tibia is behind the femoral condyle, and this side is normal. Do your posterior draw and your anterior draw. So you can clearly see, I think I've confused it now, movement. The quadriceps active test is like that, but you have your hand down here and you'll ask the patient to contract and you'll see the movement. And this, can you start the video, please? And this is what it looks like inside the knee. So this patient was referred to me with an ACL deficient knee. His ACL looks lax when it's sagged, but it's actually a PCL deficient knee. That's really common still. They get confused. But that's what you're doing when you're, doing the, when you're bringing that knee back from the sag position back to neutral. Blackman's test is a better test than anterior draw for instability. And the maximum amount of instability is at 15 to 20 degrees. So you're fixing the femur and you're moving the tibia forwards on a fixed femur. You can do it like this with your thumb. But I prefer, start the next video please. I prefer to, to do it with my knee involved. So I get my knee underneath the patient underneath the thigh, fix the femur down and pull forwards. If you've got a very big patient and you've got small hands, you can ask the examiner to help and you can use two hands. That's allowed. So we're looking at the amount of tibial forwards movement we're getting here. Pivot shift test, again, I'll be careful about doing this in the exam, but you should know about it. You probably should say, I'll do it in, under anaesthetic. Can you start the video, please? So, extend the knee. You're applying an axial load, internal rotation, valgus stress, jump, reduced, dislocate, reduced, dislocated, reduced, dislocated. You need an intact medial collateral ligament, and the alia tibial band mo moves from being a flexor to an extensor as you get that subluxation of the tibia. Then we move on to the collateral ligament examination. The medial collateral ligament's easy. Anyone can examine the medial collateral ligament. In full extension, if, it, if you've got instability, that means it's, it's a combined injury. In 20 degrees of flexion, not 30, that's not the deliberate mistake. Um, assess for laxity and endpoint. The lateral collateral, if you're Nick Harris and you're six foot three, you can do it like this. You can actually make a mess of the lateral collateral ligament quite easily. And I think that's one of the discerning things in the examination, how you examine the lateral collateral. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that later in the afternoon. There's a number of different ways you can do it. And it depends on your size, patient size, and get a, get a good way of examining the lateral collateral because it, it, can, it, it can look odd, look like a clown, really. 
So further tests will then depend on what you, which way you're going with this patient. One of the patients we saw had clearly a problem with the telephemoral joint, so you focus on that. Telephemoral tests, again, all of these can be painful, so be careful. You should know about them, but not necessarily do them all in, in, in the exam. Patella apprehension should be done in flexion. Don't dislocate the patella. And always look at your patient. Mr. Mr. Ellie's a deliberate mistake. He's not looking at his patient when he <laughs> did that. And then so this is patella glide. So you're assessing the amount of excursion of the patella. We normally assess it in quadrants. Meniscal tests. The Murray's test is 50% sensitive. So that's right half the time. But you should know about it and you should know one. Everyone's got their own way of doing McMurray's. Do it, do it one way and stick to it. Flex, I, it's what, basically all you're doing is you're compressing the meniscus somehow. Inflection and extension, you vary the movement. I flex it, I rotate, and I extend. And you're listening for a click rather than pain. And look at the patient. Um, the dial test, so if you're going for, if this is an instability case or a ligament injury case, you'll put the patient prone. Yeah, I know you can do the dial test supine, but for the exam, do it prone. Put them prone, do the dial test with both legs together in 30 degrees and 90 degrees. At 30 degrees, if it's just an isolated postlateral corner, it'll be positive. At 90 degrees, it'll be PCL and postlateral corner. Don't forget the hip. Don't forget distal neurovascular status. And you should know bait and score. <laughs> should be another slide. Here we go. Common mistakes that I see, done this for a number of years. When looking at coronal plane deformity, so have, to think, have the feet together. If you're slightly there, you'll notice it and you'll think it's together. Don't say the MCL's lax in an arthritic knee. It's not. It's correcting the various deformity. And don't underestimate fixed flexion deformity. Everybody underestimates fixed flexion. We talked about lateral collateral. We talked about don't diagnose a PCL as an ACL. So if you do your PCL first, you won't make that mistake. And don't get phased if you see a patient who's got syndrome, who's in a wheelchair, who's got an orthosis. Do your routine. If they're in a wheelchair, ask them if they stand and walk. Oops. So your routine, six steps. Stand and look. Walk and look. Sit and look. Lie the patient down. Look again. Move. And then assess your ligaments and any other special tests you need. Okay. Spot the deliberate mistake. <sighs> That's not my... Well, good question. <laughs> well, it's the mistake, the mistake that I think I've made. Nothing like feedback, is there? Go on. Thanks for the feedback, but it wasn't the mistake I was thinking. Only through feedback can you improve. Uh, was it? No, that wasn't it. It was on one of the videos. The spine test to show the position of the neck. No, this is really interesting. <laughs> he spotted loads of mistakes. No. Pardon? Should have had shorts on. No. Lachman's test. The first time I did it, I did it twice in the video. Did you notice the difference? When I flex the knee too much, it didn't move. So a common mistake that the registrars make is they flex the knee to about 45 degrees to do the knock Lachman's. Great, I'll take you five pounds. It's my birthday. And uh, it should be 15 or 20 degrees. So uh, anyway, thanks. OK, are we still all awake? So now to the foot and ankle section. Paul made a very valid uh, statement. When I went for my exam many years ago, 